toy so we're black uh, but we, we happen to be British and we do really British things and I'm like no no we're not doing this this morning I'm choosing violence Happy Black History Month. That's right. October in the UK is is Black History Month. We know it's February in the US. So technically speaking, we get two months in the year, yeah? But for now, it is ours. That also means Happy Black Pound Day. It's the first Saturday of the month. Uh, that means the Black Pound Market will be taking place over at the Legacy Centre as well. You're popping down there. I'm going to pop down there in a bit. I am. See if I can spend a little bit of my coins, you know, uh, and get some good food. <laughs> But I'm kind of of the mindset that Black History Month really and truly is not for us, okay? Because last time I checked, I was black every month, okay? And I'm good with that. <laughs> there are things about black culture that I guarantee you, many of you never were exposed to in school. But I do feel like it's an opportunity for us to educate uh, others about what it means to be beautiful and black. Because I love it. I do. I love it. I hope you love it too. And so for this month, what I'm going to do on each Saturday of Black History Month when I'm here is I'm going to talk to you about somebody in the black British community, okay, who has pioneered our lives, like who has changed something, who has done something, who has made a huge difference to the way that we live our everyday lives. And I'm not just talking about somebody from history now, do you know what I mean? I'm talking about those who are living, breathing, walking around, being black and British and great, okay? Because it's funny, I was having a conversation with someone earlier in the week about, oh, what do we do for Black History Month in terms of a media setting? And it just all felt very apologetic. It just all felt a little bit like, hi, so we're black, uh, but we, we happen to be British and we do really British things. And I'm like, no, no, we're not doing this. This morning I'm choosing violence. I choose violence. I'm out here to let everybody know that actually we have an R structuring the fabric of British society. We are British through and through. If we go to Jamaica or any of our home countries, worse Jamaica, last time I was in Jamaica, all I heard when I walked across the um, the dance hall with my cousins was, look at this, Birmingham has arrived. Okay, so realistically, you can't even act like we are, you know, we are not British, we, we drip British. Proper reggae vibes, you know. <laughs> Gaza, gully side, <laughs> all the sides. So let's celebrate the things that we do that make a difference to British society. And let's use this as an opportunity to educate other British people about the fact that we ain't just out here with big bums and hard hip hop beats, okay? We are offering a lot. So I am starting this morning with Lord Riberio, Lord Bernard Riberio. Do you know who he is? Have you heard of him? Have you got any clue? Well, let me tell you, okay? He is a doctor who qualified in 1967, okay? When some of us were not thought of, considered, in some cases our parents weren't even thought of. And he became a consultant general surgeon at Basildon Hospital in Essex in 1979. And do you know how he has changed our lives? He pioneered the use of keyhole surgery. Now, I've been fortunate, yeah? I haven't spent many nights in hospital in my life. I'm grateful for that, I'm fortunate for it. Generally speaking, I've maintained good health or I've recovered from things really quickly. Please dear Lord, let me recover from my back problems fast. Anyway, uh, having said that, I remember the last the last time I was in hospital, I had a three night stay. Um, they struggled to figure out what was wrong with me. I was just, for a while, I was just really, really ill. Anyway, we got to the bottom of it. But what was really interesting is that it turned out that what I, what was going on may have required surgery. I was told that the good news would be that if I did require surgery, that they would probably be able to do it with keyhole surgery rather than basically slicing me up and therefore on that basis would have a quicker recovery time than if I actually had to go through, you know, literal surgery, you know, knife, all of that. Okay. 
and I remember at the time thinking well thank goodness for that now I was fortunate it turned out I didn't need that um, but it is what it is so what you may hear it referred to as nowadays because um, people will say keyhole surgery um, I think they call it laparoscopy I hope I said that right um, and basically laparoscopy laparoscopy is a type of surgical procedure that allows the surgeon to access the inside of the abdomen usually tummy and pelvis without having to make large incisions in the skin the procedure is also known as keyhole surgery or minimally invasive surgery large incisions can be avoided uh, using this technique because the, the surgeon uses an instrument called uh, a laparoscope this is a small tube that has a light source and a camera which which relays images of on the inside of the abdomen or pelvis to a television monitor and then the advantages of this technique over traditional open surgery includes shorter hospital stays faster recovery times less pain and bleeding after the operation and reduced scarring my cousins came mm. through mine did not it is most commonly used in gynecology gastroenterology and urology now it's interesting that i say interesting um lord B lord ribario his specialism was urology okay um so i think when he initially was developing this technology it was in line with do making urological um procedures um a lot easier and a lot safer for for patients as well it is carried out under general anesthetic as most operations are but it again just means that it's you know a little bit of stitching at the end um and a bit of dressing that's used you know rather than all the alternatives that could be used it is considered to be much more safe and serious complications are much more rare with this type of procedure uh, minor complications they expect to be one in every like 100 cases but when you compare that to the way that things could work with normal operations it is a significant difference all of this pioneered by we own a man born in the Gold Coast in Ghana in 1944. He was made a life peer in 2010. He's held a number of public sector positions, which includes chairman of the Independent Reconfiguration Panel and advised the Secretary of State for Health and Social Care. He currently sits on the Royal College of Surgeons of England's Diversity Review Panel. He was recently appointed to the board of the Equality and Human Rights Commission to provide medical and public health expertise. He served as president of the Royal College of Surgeons of England from 2005 to 2008. And like I say, he is a peer, and therefore we must bow down and call him Lord Bernard Ribeiro. It is black people like that, that are in our community every day, that sometimes we as the black community don't even know about, who are making huge differences to, where, to the way that we live our lives. And so in this Black History Month, the theme this month is proud to be, yeah, hashtag proud to be, okay. I added the hashtag. I'm assuming there's a hashtag. Oh, I don't know, but I'm add a hashtag. For me, what that says is that it is no longer about us being apologetic for being in this society and in this community. It is no longer about us, you know, trying to act like, yeah, we honestly do have some benefit and we are offering um, growth. It is about us standing tall and having knowledge about our everyday black heroes that are making a difference to the way that we live our lives and all together are raising society up. Yes, I'm black. I'm proud of it. I'm black and beautiful. And on that note, I'm going to leave you with Cardi B. When we come back, we're going to learn about crypto. Man, I heard that I was sucking you. 